Access Fort Wayne offers reflections of our community. Production facilities provided by Access Fort Wayne are a service of the Allen County Public Library. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting organizations. For more information about creating your own television program with Access Fort Wayne, call 421-1250. Hello, I'm John Dickmeyer. Welcome to Potpourri. How are you today, Randy? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. I'm enjoying this fall weather. It's wonderful. It's my favorite season. And and uh, your big boy at home, uh, Mr. Sundance, the dog. How is he doing? He's rolling in all the leaves. He's enjoying it very uh, much. Yeah, yeah. I guess we have to say something about Sundance. He's what breed? A Newfoundland. Big boy. A big boy. 150 pounds. He's a cuddler. <laughs> and, and, and there's one other thing about him. He goes out to hospitals now. Mm -hmm. We're part of the visiting dog program. And he loves it. And all these people petting on him and loving on him. And it takes an hour. And when we go home, he collapses and he doesn't move the rest of the day. It's very <laughs> difficult being given attention, you know. Our guest today is a return guest and one of my favorite people, Shane mm. Grantham. Welcome, Shane. Thanks, John, and thanks, Randy. I enjoy being here every time. He has a beagle. I know, uh, Duke. Duke. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's not 150 pounds. No. He'd like to be if he kept eating. <laughs> then could reasonably do that, I imagine. Today our topic is one that I think is very, very relevant uh, for the end of the year kind of activities. and. We're, we're actually going to talk about computers and, oh, things that can happen to you on computers, uh, identity theft and, and other nasty things that can happen. And the reason that we're talking about that uh, today is that this, the end of the year, is the largest the, the most important part of the year for buying online. Mm -hmm. So you folks are going to be using your phones and your tablets and your computers to buy stuff. And we just don't want you to get zapped. Um, so Shane, um, let's start out by talking about maybe the worst kind of things that can happen to you uh, when you're online, uh, like awful, awful, awful viruses. How do you get a virus? Virus. Uh, well, the, the one thing that happens uh, if you don't have uh, proper protection on your computer, but the way you can get one, uh, you're asking me specifically, if you go to a website that has got a uh, payload on it that can actually uh, jump on your computer, you can get them that way. Even a website that's a known one, you know, a uh, popular website, things like that. Uh, email, you can get viruses through email. Uh, the one thing I like to stress to people is if they've got a uh, Windows operating system like Windows 7 or uh, 8, make sure that your the operating system's patched. You want to make sure you've got the latest uh, security um, programs on it, or the, late, the patches, service packs. 
And uh, so that's probably the, the biggest way you can get infected if you're not patched that way. That's, there's other things we can talk about too. But Patched meaning protected. R well, Microsoft releases updates to their operating system. Uh, they're typically on Tuesdays. Uh, they'll release a, a patch, and your Windows Update service is running on most people's computers, or, or it should be if mm -hmm. you're if you're a Windows user, and it will um, automatically push out to your computer. You'll see the updates installing, and it will ask you to update. So you need to. It's a boring thing to talk about, but it's a very important to keep mm -hmm. keep that updated. Okay. And uh, the other things you need to keep updated are things like um, Adobe Reader. Uh, real-time player, uh, Java, you'll see that pop up on your computer a lot of times. And those are all what they're called secondary programs that are running in the background to help you do your, your things on your computer. Those need to be updated too or are kept updated. What about uh, other uh, operating systems that are out there? Uh, for example, Apple. How do you feel about Apple? I like Apple uh, computers, Macintoshes. Uh, I think they're safer than Windows computers, Microsoft Windows computers. Even though I do most work, mostly work on uh, Microsoft Windows operating systems, uh, but I think the Apple operating system is is safer. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the other thing for Windows computers, you definitely need uh, virus protection or security programs, something to watch for malicious software coming in because it can come in different ways. So if you have that set up on your computer, Shane, it, as long as nothing pops up, you need to update it, it's, it's okay. You don't have to go in and do anything to it. You can just leave it alone and it'll always be there. Your op you mean your uh, virus protection? Yes. Yeah. I, I still tell all my clients, customers, that they should, sh should still check their, open up their Norton, McAfee, Komodo, whatever they're using and just check it to make sure it is current with latest signatures or virus definitions. And how can they tell if it's current? Some of them will have a red icon and turns green when it's okay. Uh. Uh, some of them will be yellow when they need, they're in the caution state, but if it's mm -hmm. green, it's usually good. But I still think it's a good idea to open it up, click on the icon for whatever, op for whatever virus uh, program you're using and just look at it. Get get have your computer person help you with it, or you figure it out yourself. See if the latest signatures on there, and that the um, it's being updated. Most of them will do it automatically anymore to answer your question. But I still think it's a good idea to just check it. It's like mm -hmm. checking the oil in your in your car. You got a light or a, a warning system, but still, it's a good idea just to check under the hood. How about uh, Android operating systems? Do I need a virus protection on those? Uh, I think it's a good idea. There, there's several out there that you can download in your um, your Play Store um, from Google. Uh, there's there's Komodo one. There's Trend Micro. There's Malware Bytes. But I think it's a good idea. I have them on my phones, uh, and it does a. You can actually do a on-demand scan where it looks through every app to see if there's a problem or if there's anything malicious on there. And it will let you know what, uh, there's even some of them will tell you what the rights of each app is, are, what, what they can do on your computer, like tell your location, tell, uh, send photos or whatever. You know, so I, th I think it's a good idea to do that. It would be good. And, and uh, they are different, aren't they? The, the different apps ha will call different functions. Right, and report information about what you're doing too. Which some people don't want to do. If you're a privacy advocate, you may want to check what your apps are really doing on your phone. What about? It probably goes along with what he just said with your phone, but like a tablet. Tablets. You should put. You know, I I have a tablet, Samsung, and I was told you don't need any virus protection, but you know, it just doesn't sound right to me. Well, I um, I myself have a. A cheaper tablet, so I don't have one of the nicer ones. My wife has a nice one. It may be something like you've got. I think I think on hers we did look and we did find something. So I think it's a good idea. It, it's hard to say because uh, malicious software, viruses, all those things, uh, Trojan horses, 
in the old days, you could tell maybe they were there just by the activities. A lot of them nowadays, they want to be stealthy and quiet and do their dirty work. You may not even know they're on your device. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's, tablets should have those too. Well, I've yeah. thought so. I know on my tablet, I, I won't do any banking or anything like that, but it doesn't mean they can still get in there and cause problems. Right, and, and along those lines, uh, Wi-Fi networks, uh, you want to be careful if you're on an open Wi-Fi network doing something sensitive like that uh, mm -hmm. because it could be someone's eavesdropping. I don't know how they do it, but somehow they can eavesdrop and maybe get your information off of your, as it's going across the internet on mm -hmm. this Wi-Fi spot on, a, on an open one. You know, it's, it's probably safer to do that someplace that's secure, like maybe your home one or a business one if it's secured. Well, you, you have to think of this, folks, that uh, if you have Wi-Fi at home, you may have a whole bunch of devices that operate off of that. You might, for example, I have uh, a streaming player for my TV. I've got um, a couple printers that operate off the Wi-Fi and and I can do my tablets and I've got I'm tablet crazy so I've got a whole bunch of them uh, I just I, I just do because uh, they're cool <laughs> they, they are it's like and baseball cards look how many I have <laughs> but I will I will run them down uh, to the point, and a lot of times it's it's just playing games, but it may be something else. Uh, well, I've I've got two that I use all the time, and then I've got some that I use for special uses, and and one of them is has a large screen, and I use it for presentation purposes. So, you know, not everything fits. But they all can uh, access my my Wi-Fi network, and you know if you can do that in your own home, and you can share information in your own home, in a closed environment. Imagine what can happen if there are absolutely no strictures to what you're doing. That everything is completely open. And that leads me to also, if you do have a uh, home Wi-Fi network or a business Wi-Fi network and you're doing business on it, you probably don't want it to be open so that anyone can connect to it and uh, make sure you have encryption on it. There's or security on it, I'll say that. In the old days, I used to release uh, uh, wireless routers without any security on them because they frustrated people and they bring them back because they think thought they were broke, but, but now I would think you, know, you need to have some security on your uh, Wi-Fi, unless you want people to find it. If you, some routers now, you can, Wi-Fi routers, you can have a guest network on it that's open and it's separate from your, your uh, home or your business network. And th those are common for uh, hospitality businesses like coffee shops and restaurants that they do that uh, as what what would you call it? it's a it's a convenience for for the for people sure they for love customers. they love to check their email when they're doing whatever mm -hmm. when they're out and about so for me example I've got a closed net closed network is that Wi-Fi wi wireless okay. network how do I know do they automatically come encrypted how do I know that. Well, you might have someone that has a device or maybe one of your own devices just uh, try to browse for open Wi-Fi networks in your neighborhood or, or when you're in your home okay. and see if it finds it and see if it requests a password or a passphrase to connect to it. That's one way. Well, but I've yours are already yeah, yours are already set up. So you might have someone that you know that's never been on your network, see if you, they can connect to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then it's encrypted. Right. Well, th yeah, there's, there's different words for it. Uh, there's encryption and then there's security. Okay. I, I've, I've lost track which one's which. But and the reason I ask is, well, you know me, I, you've got to be very 
<laughs> low term for me, but I've, I've talked with people that say, I just don't understand all these words. What does this mean? What does that mean? I don't know if I have it or if I don't have it. And so that's why I'm saying, you know, if you have a router, like I have a router, my Wi-Fi is password protected. So does that mean it's automatically encrypted? But most of them nowadays do come encrypted okay. or come, come secured. So people don't have to worry about that. I just right. not long ago had somebody say, what does the word encrypted mean? And I said, I know that's a good thing. <laughs> that's all yes. I can tell I used to be able to explain it or give you a good definition, but I've, I've forgot what it was. Um, okay. Uh, the other thing you can do with the Wi-Fi network, uh, if you want to make it a little more hidden, is uh, turn off the broadcast part of it so it doesn't broadcast the name of the network out. Now, they can still connect to it, but it's not like it won't show up in a uh, in the list of open or networks when someone's got a tablet or a phone or a computer mm -hmm. sitting outside your house. They won't see it unless they really know the name of it. So I usually rename Wi-Fi networks with something obscure that doesn't give away the name of the business. Or like the your name. Yeah, a lot of people do that. But but if it's an open group, uh, open uh, uh, Wi-Fi, you may want that. But if it's something you're doing your business on, you probably don't want other people finding right, it. Right, right. There's enough problems without wi open Wi-Fi oh. networks. There's another thing I think people ought to know about, and that's, I'll use the fancy name for it, it's the protocol that's used to search uh, for um, stuff on uh, basic Microsoft networks, and that's HTTP. But there's a better way right. of searching. What is that? Or you mean that? The uh, secure website, HTTPS? Yes. Yeah, when you're going to a shopping site or something that is supposed to be secured, that should be the uh, URL or the universal re uh, resource locator, the, the, the website name. That's what everybody calls it. But make sure it's HTTPS, colon, slash, slice, and whatever. And there should be a little lock up in the corner, and that's a security certificate um, that's supposed to verify that. Um, website because you can have a, uh, a spoofed website that looks like the site you think you're on and that's how they can extract information. So I don't know how they do it, but they do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's a question for you. Um, I pay my bills online. So I, AEP. Somebody made the comment to me, why do you have to have a password with that? I mean, what's the worst thing it can do? Pay your bill? Well, get your identity probably, or, or they can still right. sneak in and get it that way. I suppose, yeah. So, okay. yeah. That was that yeah. was my comment. I said I'm sure there's a, a a reason other than p bill paying, but that was a question that was presented to me. They could probably bill. change inform your personal information and have your bill go somewhere else, and then that's a can of worms you don't want. Right. Okay. I think is. Well, my response was, I don't know, but I have one. <laughs> <laughs> I figure there's something they can do to me, so I'll have one. The reason for the security, I think, is that you don't want any of your personal information to be taken by someone who will use it for their own gain. And. Uh, actually have another program that's coming up that where we'll discuss some of that directly the bad things that that can happen when uh, the crooks of this world decide that they want your information and they want to use it in their way um, Let's say I'm going out and, and I'm buying Christmas presents, uh, and I'm, I'm, I've selected some business, and I've never dealt with that business before, but let me just pull something out of my head. Um, that I'm looking for Kona coffee from Hawaii and oh, a bunch of 
sites come up and I browse through and I pick something and the price looks good and I decide to buy. What are some of the things that I need to look for and some of the things I need to have in my head before I decide to give them any information like my credit card number or I decide to pay? And what kind of pay? Uh, what are some of the pay options that maybe I ought to consider? Uh, back to the uh, the uh, website name, make sure there's an HTTPS in there when you go to pay for it. Uh, if you're just going to do a search, a mm -hmm. random search like that, that can be, can be dangerous because it could take you to a site that's a fake site like we were talking about, a, a, a replica site of a, a major site, uh, a major buying site. So if, you, if you're just looking for an item, that, that may be a little more dangerous. But if you, can, if you know the name of the buying site you want to go to, like say it's randysite.com, uh, instead of just searching for that, type in the name of the website directly in your, uh, your web browser and go to it that way. That, that would maybe assure you that you're going to actually Randy's site versus a, f uh, a fake site. As, as far as paying options, now I'm not an expert in banking or any of that, but I've heard that if you use a um, credit card versus a debit card, that's maybe a little safer, but that's just what I've heard because they can't drain your bank account as easily if it's a credit card. But uh, I don't myself do a lot of online buying. Um, I will, if I'm going to buy something, I do have a, um, a supplier that I go through. It's a major site. I'm not going to say who it is. And, and I have a rep there, and I work with them over the phone or email that way. But uh, I have bought things in the past. But searching something, uh, if you know the name, I would get maybe an opinion or there's there's shopping sites out there that compare a bunch of them at the same ones like my Simon and some of them like that I think that's what the name was but uh, and you can look at all the um, products under one uh, comparison so that that would be an option also you could try what's this uh, PayPal what is that oh PayPal uh, some places um, it started, I think, from eBay, and it's a way to pay for, you have an account with PayPal, and it's a way to pay for your online shopping things without giving out your credit card. They have your credit card, but you don't give it to the shopping sites as you're going around. You pay with a PayPal account. And if you don't have enough in your account, they will let you know, and you have so much time to uh, update your or uh, pay your, your account on PayPal. So it's a safer way to... to um, uh, shop or pay for um, your goods on online. How, how do you feel about uh, special accounts? Like you can go into a store and buy a a, a Visa uh, for fifty dollars, a, a, a Visa gift account, and and use that. Uh, instead of, say, your regular account. Yeah, I've never used one, but I do like that idea because I'm afraid using my credit card, you know, all the things mm -hmm. is you, you hear in different major uh, stores or places uh, get hacked and thousands and millions of records are taken. So I, that does sound like a good idea. I've never actually used one, though, like that. I would recommend, though, if you buy one from a store, keep the receipt because I did that once and they, you know, they charged it on there. It was a gift, but when the person went to use it, there was a zero balance on it. Oh. Luckily, I had you the receipt. Prove it. But if you don't have the receipt, then you're out that money. I'm really, really concerned by. Let's say everything goes well, and that's wonderful. But what happens if everything doesn't go well, 
and then you're infected. What then? Uh, what? And and I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. How am I going to know that maybe I have viruses or what? What will be? What will happen? That that will maybe indicate that. Uh, generally, uh, your computer may work slower. Uh, you may get pop-ups here and there. Uh, when you, there's all kinds of different infections, but some of them will, uh, they're called rogue programs, and they'll pop up, and they're infections, and they say that uh, you need to buy this to disinfect mm -hmm. this, or you have 2,000 viruses, and they craft them to look like a, um, a real security product. You know, like a Norton or a McAfee or one of the big big ones, or a Windows security alert. They'll use the same colors or a similar shield. So if you've got something like that um, and you didn't install it, you're infected that way. Uh, a lot of them will be in the background, like we were saying earlier, and they won't let you know you're infected. Um, the only real way is uh, you know, do a scan with whatever security product you've got. I've got several that I use, and I've got some even I can scan before, if we're talking Windows, obviously, with Microsoft Windows, I can scan before it even starts. So if there is something in there changing the operating system behavior so it covers its tracks, I'm, I could usually find them beforehand. Uh, the other way you might know is if, if uh, you're getting a lot of return email, possibly, and you're computers being used as a spam bot or whatever, uh, automatic robot that's sending out spam. Mm -hmm. You've been infected that way. Uh, I think just general slowness. Um, if uh, things are just taking longer to start up, and that's why I really stress you need to have some kind of security product on your, on your Windows computers. I run into people once in a while that don't have any, they don't realize it, or it's expired. So, you know, check your security program. Open it up and look at it. See if it's up to date. And I'll say something, uh, but I think it's necessary when you buy an electronic device that you have someone that you can trust that can take care of that computer or that, that piece of equipment when you have a problem with it. And don't just go out and, and, and blindly use your computer equipment, but, but do have someone that's on your team to repair that or to uh, remove uh, infestations that you've got. Um, someone like Shane or there are a whole lot of reputable folks out there that that you might trust, and I think that's that's something that's really important. Yeah, there's something else relating to what you were saying. Um, if you've got a Windows computer, go into your control panel and look under Add Remove Programs or Programs itself, and you can look in there and see what's actually installed on your computer, what programs. And you can sort it by date, which is really helpful. We Just have learned way too much <laughs> here. Uh, if you have more questions, I suggest you talk to your professional. Thank you, Shane, for being on the program. Thank you uh, all for watching. I'm John Dickmeyer, and this has been Potpourri. Access Fort Wayne offers reflections of our community. Production facilities provided by Access Fort Wayne are a service of the Allen County Public Library. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne.
the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting organizations. For more information about creating